So I recently came across this tweet where somebody asked that why do we need UDP at all? Like why not use TCP for everything? And I just tweeted a quirky tweet where I just missed some characters just to convey the note that you know you can basically convey information with information loss perfectly fine in some of the scenarios but i just figured out then you know why not let's just create a video on this go a little bit deeper into people who love tech and how does this work how do we actually use this tcp udp and even show you some real world example from one of the companies one of the startups products that we have on that so you know as we know like two of the popular ways of transmitting data is using TCP or UDP, right? And these are like two protocols which allow you to conduct or send information to and fro on internet. Now TCP as a protocol, it stands for transmission control protocol and UDP also has some full form which I am not exactly aware about right now, datagram protocol or something. But anyway, the idea is that transmission control protocol or TCP is basically a protocol that says that, hey, if you want this data delivered from computer A, to computer B, I'm going to deliver this no matter what. And I'm going to also ideally maintain the order of messages. For example, if I send this message one first, and then I send two, then I send three, then TCP says that I'll also get this delivered in the same order. UDP on the other hand is you can consider UDP as a low level construct of TCP, right? So you can technically build a TCP on top of UDP. So UDP is a lower level construct, which does not have so many guarantees and checks and all of that. It just says that, Hey, I, I'll just help you broadcast the message from one computer or one system to another and it's basically like a fire and forget so whether this receives or does not receive it's none of my concern right so you just fire the message and you just forget about it that is what fundamentally the protocol is and yes you can construct tcp protocol on top of udp by adding all of these checks and all so in a way udp is sort of like a building block right you can use this as a building block for building something more meaningful now the thing is that why is this needed why do we not always have all the guarantees and niceness and everything in the first place everything has a use case right so tcp obviously is a you has a use case where for example imagine that you are downloading from your bank account you're downloading your bank balance over an api right let's say which is just an api which just returns you just your balance number right so exactly the number so if it returns you the balance number for example like let's say you just have hundred dollars in your bank you want to make sure that this is not going to you know corrupt the data in between when this data is getting transmitted so instead of for example let's say you are one rich guy and you have let's say 100 million in your bank account what you don't want is some level of data corruption or something happening which reduces maybe like one or two zeros i don't know like anything that can happen when you're transmitting data could happen right so there could be a data loss there could be bit flips or whatever in that case you ideally want the system the underlying system itself to be so resilient that it detects that there has been a packet loss there has been something some information corruption has happened or something has happened obviously this is not packet loss directly the two digits that i'm saying it's more like a bit flip thing which is error correction but the idea is that you don't want the information to be lost in certain scenarios like this on the other hand there are some scenarios like maybe attending a live call right so which is a most popular use case of udp in that case it's completely fine if people are you know just getting a little bit of data dropped right because who cares if you did not see the last two seconds of my video as long as we can continue the playback smoothly the other thing obviously is because of the nature of the udp protocol you can see that this is sort of like a fire and forget like i've already mentioned tcp the way it works is that the guarantees the way they are established is it's like a three-way protocol before any communication happens it has to send a sin packet then it has to acknowledge the server and then there is a synac packet if i remember right right correct me if this is wrong but now once this is done now the communication can happen udp on the other hand is just you know you just start blasting data now you might ask a good question then why does dns use udp primarily why it is not built for built on top of tcp right because obviously if i'm opening a new tab writing a website or you know i'm using some software and it needs to resolve that domain to let's say something like an ip address 1.2.3.4 you want to make sure that this ip address is reliably sent back to your computer right otherwise you'll not be able to use the website itself now the reason dns uses udp are a few 
thing first of all obviously dns is a extremely old technology around like 1980s or 1990s whenever the internet was established so it is from those times and of course at that time things like bandwidth and things like internet speed were extremely low right so you wanted an extremely efficient protocol or is extremely efficient system that can just transmit the data and get the job done. Secondly, DNS is very latency sensitive in a way where you want to be sure that the latency is lowest because see, it's basically a blocking thing, right? Until and unless you have not figured out the DNS, you can do nothing. Once you have figured out DNS and once you have the IP address, then maybe you can parallelize some level of request, right? But let's say if I suddenly open a page which has, or maybe like, you know, suddenly open an app that is doing like 10 requests to google.com none of these requests can really go through until and unless we have the dns figured out so this is latency sensitive in a way that you need to get this figured out as soon as possible that means this has to be as fast as possible and dns responses generally are extremely small also right because you just need a host name you need to get the txt record or a record or cname record whatever you're requesting at the time of dns lookup and then you want to you know just go on with your work right? But yes, there are use cases where DNS also uses TCP. I'll not get into that, but there are some of some of these scenarios where DNS does use TCP as well. Now you might think that UDP is, I mean, it's great, but it's specific to some use cases. And then that's actually not true. The problem, what happened with TCP is that sometimes, and when I say sometimes, I mean, in a lot of applications, TCP does a little way too much work, right? It provides a lot of checks. It provides a lot of specific standard that you have to follow like I mentioned this three-way handshake for example maybe in some of these reliability systems you don't want to do this right so that's why there are certain applications for example if you have heard about quick protocol which is built by Google that is a replacement for how we browse the internet and what the HTTP underlying protocol this is what HTTP 3 is also based on if I'm not very wrong I think there are a lot of ideas inspired from quick itself but the idea here is that if you want to implement something like TCP but without everything that TCP TCP has to offer, you have to start from UDP because this is like I mentioned, this is like a lower level construct with, through which you can build a protocol like TCP. Now, I just realized while creating this video that I also have this WireGuard instance over here, right? So WireGuard is one of the VPN services that you can you just boot up an instance and you can start this. And this WireGuard that exists over here, even WireGuard uses UDP, right? So it does not use TCP and it's a VPN, right? You know, you might think that if this is your PC and if this is like a VM, or a server on internet and then this is like a real internet or whatever like you're accessing the web or whatever this protocol when you are using WireGuard it uses UDP now obviously this would make no sense if you just you know connect to WireGuard and 50% of the websites are not working so they did implement the reliability layer on top of UDP itself right so that is how WireGuard made it work it is not TCP so it's not using TCP out of the box, but it's also not fully UDP, right? So it's, it's built on top of UDP. It uses UDP as an underlying thing, but then it builds its own reliability layer on top of it. Now you might think that UDP is all rainbows and sunshine, but th that is not exactly true because if we go back to this diagram where TCP is what we are calling as like, you know, a slow protocol or something that, you know, does a lot of work, it has an interesting property of this three-way handshake, right? So the reason it's done, one of the reasons it's done is because it establishes that A and B actually want to talk to each other, right? In an ideal world, obviously, this will always be true. But what can happen in case of UDP is that because A and B, for example, these are two computers and B, let's say, responds to the request of A by any chance, because this is a fire and forget protocol, it does not implement these checks where it B actually does not really know that A sent it or just somebody else is pretending to be a and then send it right because for example for dns right if you are requesting a dns request to a specific server let's say that you say that hey i want the ip address of let's say google.com let's say this server asked this question to b now b would say sure here is the ip address where do you want me to send it so a would also make it in the request itself that my ip address is one two three four whatever
whatever, right? Now it's technically possible that A can lie about this. So A could be an attacker, this computer could be an attacker, which just tells B that I want the IP address of this, but send the response to somebody else. And this is some uninterested, unknown server C, let's say, and B gets the request from this attacker, but sends the response here. Now what can happen, which is what we call as a UDP amplification attack as well. Let's say that this is somehow able to create a request, which the response of which is much larger, right? So let's say that instead of IP address, it said like, I want TXT record or whatever. Like let's, let's assume for now that this is going to respond completely in UDP mode. And this TXT is, let's say, you know, one KB. Let's for the sake of it, let's just make it possible that it responds with a DNS UDP lookup of one kilobyte. And it sends this one KB attack over here, one KB payload over here. Now C never requested for it, but it got some response, right? And you might think like, what harm would it do? But if you combine this with, you know, this attacker asking a lot of servers and all of them just sending a lot of information to C, which it did not ask for, it's virtually impossible for C to sustain, right? It, it would go down because its network would be impacted. Now, of course, there are ways and there are things like, you know, that is why platforms like Cloudflare exist. So Cloudflare, what it says is that you can, you know, you can just use our WAF. AWS says that you can use our WAF. And what they do is that basically they'll try to absorb this traffic, right? Because they use things like Anycast IP addresses and they have all these DOS and DDoS measures and so on and so forth. But that is why you generally don't put a naked service on the internet public facing, right? You need some sort of protection from these weird sort of attacks. Obviously, you can just disable all DNS, all UDP traffic at all. That is also one way on a network level. But again, even then you have to configure some sort of network, right? Because if it's reaching your compute instance anyway, probably it's a little too late because you might not have the capacity to absorb the whole attack and the whole traffic. So yeah, that's, that's a quick little rant on why do you need UDP and why there are no good solutions as such. I mean, TCP is great when it works, not so great when you need to build your own performance stack. In that case, UDP helps. But of course, UDP also has its own drawbacks and you have to implement at least part of the wheel on your own. And of course, it suffers from such scenarios and amplification attacks as well. Um, hopefully this gave you a little bit of idea about these two topics. That's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That's all for this one. I'll see you in the next video very soon.